moving on uh, to our next uh, power packed fireside session that uh, we'll be talking about the creativity in television what works what doesn't please uh, help me in join and welcoming harsha the Raja Daksha, the Chief Creative Officer of Gilby India. We've got Sukesh Nayak, uh, Chief Creative Officer of Gilby India. Uh, of course, uh, Kainaz uh, Karmakar, Chief Creative Officer of Gilby India, uh, is uh, currently in this post, uh, so she uh, won't be joining us. Uh, the session chair is uh, Neeta Nair, Associate Editor, in fact. Uh, we'd like to humbly welcome all our esteemed guests of honor, and thank you so much for your valuable time on this wonderful day today and we look forward to a great uh, chat which is lined up ahead over to you Neeta to take it forth thank you Bhavna so we have with us two people who are part of an agency which is considered the alma mater of the best creative brains in the country and they are part of a trio which is together churned out path-breaking work in the past few years well Kainas was also supposed to join us today but uh, like Bhavna said she's not well and Harshad, I think this is possibly the first time that I'm going to be interviewing you alone without Kainas. So it's going to I be really straight. I would say strange. so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Super. So, uh, you know, let's, let me welcome uh, on TV first, uh, Sukesh Nayak and Harshad Rajadhyaksha. Uh, Thank Chief you, Neeta. Officers of India. Thank you so much, Neeta, for having us here. I'm quite excited. <laughs> Likewise. And so we are all ready to talk about creativity in TV advertising, uh, what works and what doesn't. Um, so we've seen some fabulous work from Ogilvy in the past two years, ever since you guys uh, took over as a CCOs. Now, would you call uh, Ogilvy an agency where the biggest chunk of work is still happening for TV? Would you want to answer this thought? Yeah, we can both. I mean, we can just keep it <laughs> whichever way. So okay, if something pops to mind, we'll just fill in each other. But um... Instinctively, okay. Uh, Ogilvy is, I would say, and I'm not saying this because uh, I'm associated with the agency right now in whichever capacity, but Ogilvy, ever since, you know, we were kids and I mean, we were in our student days and college days, I would say uh, Ogilvy has been the one place which practically revolutionized uh, television commercial advertising in India. I would safely say that uh, right from the 90s and the thrust which uh, Piyush led. And of course, I mean, we it led to an overall, I think, of course, there were many, many great players beyond Ogilvy also. But I think Ogilvy, because of its sheer width and bulk, I think became synonymous with quality, uh, cutting-edge TV advertising in India. So given our image and the fact that uh, we take a great pride in all our storytelling, the mm -hmm. image is that, yes, Ogilvy is probably, you know, uh, we are doing a lot of television advertising right now. But... Uh, by a sheer volume, it would also mean that the TV advertising is across a bulk and width of brands. Mm -hmm. But if I were to just say that that's all we are doing, I think we are fast kind of a lot of the other stuff, especially the new age media, mm -hmm. especially uh, revolutions where it comes to marrying conventional storytelling with, uh, you know, technological advancements and uh, technological platforms, social platforms. I think a lot of that is also happening. But yeah, currently, if you look at the sheer, you know, sheer proportion of uh, events, I would say that TV advertising is still considerable, but the mm -hmm. rest of it is catching up. Okay. So I'd like to ask Sukesh. Uh, okay, lovely. So I think uh, I have a, see, we are, we are, uh, we are an, uh, an agency that stands for ideas. Okay. Let's mm -hmm. just start with there. And we are not about, and whichever was the medium, I think uh, Harsha very rightly put it. When uh, before our time, I think before we got in, when television was the new medium that was you know around, I think ideas that were cracked for television were mind blowing. I think we created some stunning uh, you know body of work with the new medium that came to play, and that was the way people were communicating, right? So it had to be, and if you're in the business of communication, we gotta be in sync with what's uh, being used by people. Right. So I feel that uh, Ogilvy is an agency that stands for ideas that are just across dimension. And I think today, uh, by not just having a virtue of something that we want to own, but mm -hmm. the body of work that has been created in the last uh, four or five years, like Hasha mentioned, and those are the brands that are ready, uh, willing to take the leap and you know uh, have taken such incredible journey uh, with them and created uh, a body of work that is probably today being shared uh, as best of class, even in worldwide, you know, at, uh, WP, uh, at WP2. So I think uh, we are, whatever is the medium, we want to own it. Mm -hmm. We want to do it the best. Let's leave it at that. 
and you are. Uh, you know, is but one thing I wanted to ask you is: Is TV considered a solitary medium today, or are more and more clients looking at a hybrid solution between digital and TV, like uh, what you did for Mondelez, not just the Diwali? Is that the norm? Are clients coming to you with that kind of a request? I, I think uh, uh, it's all about uh, who all we want to reach and what we want to achieve with, uh, and what problem we want to solve. I think all these three things are very critical before any campaign that we do. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, always, uh, as we were very fortunate to have amazing partners, and we we saw them from far, and now we sit on the same table and have conversation with them, and we understand why they are so great. I think mm-hmm. those amazing partners have truly been the best support of uh, ensuring that whatever is needed, right? So it's not a devoid of let's not do TV. I don't think we are so knee jerk about stuff. Not at all. I think Harshad said it very well. Being. We, we listen to what is to be done first. And then we, we go back as a team with uh, a whole bunch of things that we think would be the right solution to solve this problem, right? Whatever we have to uh, tackle or take care of or to build. And then we decide, okay, this is the big idea. We like this idea and you know we can do this by this thing and we can do something here and we can do it here. So if you see our body of work, Actually, we take great joy in the fact that, you know, a lot of things are truly integrated and that's what makes us really happy. And it's just not one thing. And that's what we have at least felt with all the partners that we are working with is that there's a there's a tremendous demand for uh, wanting to do a well thought through idea. So again, idea at the heart of it. And then how many ways can you make sure the idea reaches to my consumer and make sure that it touches and, you know, it really makes a difference or, you know, makes them talk about it. So whatever is the need, uh, whatever is the uh, idea deserves, we have the support and the backing and the belief to deliver. Between the three of you, Harshad, I see you as a person who really enjoys the uh, creative storytelling. So I want to ask you, you know, we've seen very long format uh, content-led ads on digital, which have become very popular, like Arunayar's uh, Bartan Dholiye with uh, Sumit Vyas from Wait Fit. I'm sure everybody's seen that. But would you say that uh, today it's far more difficult to make a 15-second ad than a five-minute uh, video on digital? Uh, you're saying in terms of the difficulties of the time constraints? You know, in, in terms of uh, getting that effective effectiveness through. Again, time, again, I, I would say in our experience, we have, uh, again, kind of uh, uh, exactly the point that Sukesh touched upon. We don't start off by, you know, in our heads as creative storytellers, simply uh, start off by saying, ki, hey, let's make this a, you know, long uh, story or let's say it in a snappy way. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's helpful when, uh, as a part of the brief, the media plan, sometimes they are very unbendable. Sometimes, I mean, it's, as creative people, we are the first people to kind of get to the table with the clients and the media partners to say that, why does it only have to be a 15 second? This probably, and especially just as a, uh, without getting into too many details, especially when the need of the brand is to kind of touch an emotional chord. Traditionally, as storytellers, I think all three of us, Kenna, Sukesh, I, we have all realized that emotions to land them. It's not simply about reading a script on paper and then translating into into TV and mathematically reading that, okay, look how comfortably all these dialogues are fitting over there. There are Mm -hmm. things where when an emotion is expressed, when a dialogue lands with a certain gravitas, there is the exchange of looks, there is a lump in the throat, there is time, which is not, which cannot be justified by mathematics alone. And that is where we often find a bit hard pressed when the need of the brand or the requirement or the appreciation of the of the client as well as the audience is for emotional advertising, but what you end up with getting is 15 seconds. Mm-hmm. If that is not the requirement, we try and completely work out a solution by uh, educating our partners at the client and saying that, listen, if 20 is the absolute, uh, you know, uh, requirement that you'll have and you cannot spend beyond that, then let us tailor uh, our communication to the most impactful 20. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the client will say that, you know, I have to engage with people and really have have that kind of a story which can really, you know, bring bring, uh, a lump to throats because I think this is a cause which requires that kind of a thing. Then we can tell stories. I mean, here Sukesh is behind the fabulous Google reunion that you saw. And uh, the length of that film, that needed that. That is a story that cannot be told in what 15 seconds. Shodo, I don't think it can be told in 40 seconds or uh, even 45, 50 seconds. It needs to play out. So I think it's basically like horses for courses. So mm-hmm. I would say, yes, uh, it does seem inst- instinctively challenging to say an entire story in 15 seconds. 
But I think once we know that that is the only requirement, for example, Kenaz and I worked on a red label campaign for Mother's Day a few years ago, which is uh, before pre-roll became a thing. We just instinctively thought that, hey, the time that uh, kids give to their mothers is so scanty right now. Mothers are taken for granted. And Mm -hmm. the time that a YouTube pre-roll has is so short. It's barely like, you know, whatever few seconds. So we equated that and landed a very effective communication where the mothers are trying to slip in a message saying, Start spending time with me. So that's how we use the shorter duration and that's why creativity counts. So I think it's again horses for courses. Well said. You know, again, another thing is TV was always considered this medium for brands with deep pockets and highly established ones. Uh, but the past five years, I think has seen an influx of startups, mid-sized brands on TV in good measure, which is great. Uh, but what it has also done is it's added to the clutter on TV. So is that a challenge or an opportunity for you guys as uh, as creative leaders whose job is to make the brand stand out? And how do you do that? See, they still have funds. Huh? So funds uh, without funds, you don't play this game. So I think uh, one thing that they have is abundant of uh, amount of funds. What they do with it is uh, where the magic happens. So I think some of them have done some brilliant work mm-hmm. and uh, credit to them. Some of them have done some really average work, which catch the clutter. Uh, so I feel that uh, it's good to have people who are truly, uh, you know, driving uh, numbers. I would say most of them are really looking at, you know, they are looking at la- long time brand building. They are looking at uh, solutions that, you know, earlier some other clients have looked at. They're looking at truly, you know, numbers, get me the numbers, get me the numbers, you know, get me more people on my platform, get me more people on my platform. So even there, I'm saying, even as that functional so that functional uh, challenge that they're sitting on, there's still some of them who are doing very great work. And uh, it's good. It's always good to have people, you know, uh, doing great work. I think that's one thing. So it's it's always will be those who will truly succeed and stand out, who uh, who have the courage to look at a, a, an idea and say, hey, this scares me. I don't know what will happen to it, but let's go for it. I think if anyone who goes with feeling all great about the idea and saying it's safe from all ends, I think it remains safe. And that's where the I think the clutter gets created. And I want to add one point to the last question that you asked, Harshad. I think it's a very tough one, but I keep saying always, 20 seconds is a moment. And if you can get a moment in emotion, go for it, you will get it. But uh, if you're looking at a storyline in a 20 second of you know different emotions coming and going through, very, very difficult. So those who want a 20 second, uh, those who want a very tight communication, choose an emotion that can be delivered in a moment. It'd be really nice. It'd be very powerful. But there is no, where's the up point? Where's the down point? Where's the high point? Where's the climax? Uh, that's not, mm-hmm. not going to happen. So I think those standard measurement of, uh, no matter what people tell you, I'm sure people must be having lots of presentations and data and series coming to you, all of that. But 20 seconds, just one moment from life. And a moment can be very beautiful too, mm-hmm. as long as we are looking for a moment. <laughs> and I just had, uh, if uh, something linked to the question you asked, yes, advertising has gotten cluttered with so many more players. Is it daunting? I'm saying it's actually even more challenging for creative because you get to really, really, you know, be sharp and on your toes to make it stand out. But I'm saying it's a sign of our times, Neeta. If you look at, while we are concerned with the advertising space, Look at what has happened to entertainment that we consume. We all grew up roughly around the 80s, 90s, our generation. And we often feel that, oh, those shows, uh, where have all those shows gone? The lovely Malgudi days and the Nukkads or whatever, the Doodarshan era and just the beginning of the satellite era. But Mm -hmm. if you look at that, the number of shows that had a largely captive audience vis-a-vis the earlier times, and now look at what is happening to content. I mean, explosion, yeah. there is an explosion. Would those shows have had to pull up their socks? And I, I don't mean the specific ones I mentioned, but anybody who's right now creating any content, would mm-hmm. they pull up their socks and have to be that much more meaningful and sharper and uh, stand out? It's happening everywhere. And advertising is no different. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very true because I was speaking to Santosh uh, Paddy, again, a creative genius. And he was uh, telling me that, you know, you remember all the shows, uh, all the ads also from the 1990s, but tell me about, you know, ad that you saw last month and that stayed with you. And it's very difficult to think about, uh, you know, it, there are very few that actually fit that category. So, yeah, you're right. Very, very right there. You know, but but tell me something. When a brief comes your way, 
you know is the idea uh, to make every ad a masterpiece or to make maybe one in 10 a masterpiece considering that this clutter that is happening you know how do you how do you go about it i'm trying to get inside your mind and i'm hoping for a candid response yeah every brief is an opportunity absolutely every one of them Nobody is going to say this yeah. that okay. Abi, I have one hit. Diya, so let me go easy and you know take a breather and let four jobs slide because it's unfair to the brief. And Nita, honestly, na the definition of creative. In fact, uh, somebody back in our student days, one of the students in a forum had asked this question of an advertising legend, and uh, they asked how much creativity. It sounded so bizarre, but it was a student asking how much creativity should each ad have. and he said uh, you might have all the ingredients in your cookbook that you use in the kitchen if you are interested in cooking but one of the most vital ingredients which is going to make or break your dish is salt and no cookbook ever in life is going to prescribe the amount of salt they'll say add salt to taste taste that is in a way the best answer i've heard on this every brief will have to be given like sometimes the concept is so complex like mm-hmm. we have worked on categories where uh you know phone transfer of money when that first came to india it was a bizarrely complex um, you know uh, concept to uh, grasp and we had to say it in the most engaging way possible now that is a different yardstick of creativity and within the purview of what was required of that brief we are very happy with the kind of work that we were able to do because would it meet like say you know accepted standard of what 10 people will call the most creative ads of the decade probably not but was it extremely creative for the task at hand it was so i think our intent what i'm trying to say is creativity will have to be a tailored measured response to that brief and that's how at least we look at it and like sukesh said the intent is not to ever let you know the the ball slip you always yeah, have to the day you, i think the day okay uh, the best way to answer very candid i i think every day even now after all these years when i'm when i'm sitting on a on a on a project i still feel scared okay i feel like will i get it right the day you know in my head that i i know it all that's the day i think i should just walk away because that's the day i will stop doing something which is and that's the feeling you must have for every single project that you're working on now would all of them go on to become a hit uh that is something that audience always reacts people out there react but you always give it your best shot and there are many many factors in play there are some people who are wanting to do the most bravest work wanting to push and you will i mean you automatically see in, in a team the gravitation of those you know to that kind of projects when they come there are some that are difficult there are some very very difficult and you have to manage things and you still nobody wants to put a bad piece of work out there never ever one should do a bad piece of work that's i would try my level best never to put something out that you're embarrassed about right so mm-hmm. but you always give it your best shot keeping all the moving you know balls in the air which one's going to fall where but i think personally for me i walk in every day even now okay. feeling a, like a you know a little bit uh, there is always that doubt will you fail this time okay. and i think that's what keeps you going but, you know, still sukesh i think you know whatever said and done there is still certain kind of brands which get an added attention from probably i don't know if i'm wrong uh, for example if uh, a dabar red uh, ad or a parker pen ad both will be clients if i'm not wrong they don't stand out as much as a mondelez ad so are there certain brands which are even attractive for a creative person to work on i mean uh, no like i said uh, all our clients all all the brands we try to do our best okay we do we always i i think i would say nobody at will be would ever look at a piece of work and say this one i don't want to do because mm-hmm. i think you you always will try to give it your best shot you will always push as much as you can whether it's a even if it's a let's say a to create a post because someone is waiting to put that post out there which gets the whole world talking about it and that's what you're looking for at the end mm-hmm. of the day you join this business to basically make sure that you know someone says oh wow i didn't expect this so you never know where it might come from so uh, i think we give all the same amount of attention uh, and the same amount of effort Mm-hmm. and but at the end of the day work that comes out is obviously something that depends on the world of people out there who like to see and love it or not love it is something in their hands okay now you spoke about how uh, even today clients with big budgets are the ones who are you see uh, on tv uh, but uh, talking about the production value and the size uh, the kind of money they are putting in today are, are, does it still mean great production values is directly related to success and 
uh, has the pandemic kind of uh, shrunk the kind of amount uh, money that is put into an advertisement today? No, I, I I don't think they are. I mean, what is needed, what is needed. I think uh, if you come to Ogilvy, for example, you obviously you are you are paying what what Ogilvy, for example, is asking for. Now mm-hmm. that could be you know uh, there's no there's no fixed you know it's always what a talent at the end of the day. So even in production, we believe to work with the best talent that we feel will take your idea to the next level, right? Now that talent pool is everybody, like a director, there's a DOP, there's a music director, there's so many people you work with. So we always, always, always recommend to always work with people who can add something which is 10 on 10 and make it maybe 12 on 10. And that's what magic happens. So Mm -hmm. that's what we do. But at the end of the day, there is a reality that comes into play and then you decide how to, you know, put a best team together on that. And uh, so that's what we recommend. But coming to the last question that you asked, which is about, is there a, no, not really. I think uh, there are some people who had to, because the businesses were impacted. So for us, for us, for a certain amount of time, I did see, you know, a change in, you know, what they used to do earlier, what they did, but I'm also seeing them coming back and saying that, you know, this one, let's make it bigger. This one, let's try to work with this, you know, this team. Let's, well, let's try to get something even, you know, so they, I think the intent uh, to bounce back is even there in even every one round. So again, like I said at the very beginning, nobody wants to do a bad piece of work. I don't think anybody wants to create anything which is not memorable. So even if there was a, uh, there was a time where, uh, and if they see value, by the way, so another thing, if they see value, people mm-hmm. are willing to spend the money. So if, if there's a value that is on the table, so if there's a value which has not been justified, then no one's spending for sure. Okay. Harshad, I'd like to come to you. Uh, you know, what about this ultra sensitive audience of today? You know, I'm talking about how see a seemingly non-controversial ad can become explosive in minutes, seconds rather. So Tanishk, uh, Tanishk example is a beautiful one, I think. And it kind of gets magnified threefold if it's on TV. So how do you create advertisements then? And now, if it, like right now, is there a rule book on which, you know, you have listed things as, these are the things I don't need to touch, you know, these no. are bad. <laughs> There are, there are two aspects which at least as practitioners of uh, idea creation, we have come to realize, which is one is, uh, I think it's a, it's just like the holy grail. I mean, that is there is no deviation from this. Mm-hmm. Brands are personalities and brands are people. So do not do anything which just for, you know, quick access and quick talkability, do not sensationalize anything which is not in sync with the tonality and the personality of your brand. Mm-hmm. And uh, why just, oh yeah, uh, but uh, lots of uh, lots of people feel that it's a shortcut or a ticket to get their, you know, two days of noticeability and talkability, but it can boom brand so badly on your brand if that is not in your brand's DNA. Mm-hmm. But if Sorry. it adheres to the world and the values that you have for your brand, then don't shy away from it. Then don't shy away from it because... Uh, if it is relevant, and of course there are enough safeguards in any any practicing uh, you know team in any agency that there are so many custodians, not just the creative people, the planners, the account management, and the client team itself. That there are almost like these are the elders who will always watch out for that baby that's growing up. So there will be a lot of quality checks and tick boxes which say that you know uh, are we offending anybody? You know is this uh, likely to be a fallout? And also, is if it is not, if it is really absolutely sparkling and true to that brand's character, and if you still feel along with your client partner that that is the right thing for the brand to do, because mm-hmm. it is the correct thing to do, I think we have been blessed with some brilliant client partners who show that kind of faith in the work. And then it's like, if later on so-and-so scenario emerges, but we have the conviction that we have done what is absolutely clear to our target audience and to the brand, then you shouldn't fear it. But the equally, what I said in the beginning is you shouldn't, we don't try and set off by saying, hey, you know what, let's create a sensation. Now, the situation outside, especially with social media is so volatile that usually ads have a certain, you know, lifespan in terms of ideation. Usually even at the tightest, you will have a couple of weeks from ideation to getting a production partner on board to executing it. And suddenly, like it happened, I don't want to uh, get into the brands or whatever, but uh, last year, uh, there was a small controversy after the death of a Bollywood star about a commercial which was conceived so much in advance that it had no bearing on what people made out of it. So that you cannot help. But was it true to the brand at hand and what uh, did it kind of live up to all the requirements it did? So then you don't need to fear anything. 
that's that's the only thing and i, I think this put, as far as this particular brand is concerned they continue to air it and they said we're not going to apologize yeah because no. absolutely there was nothing wrong in it and at that time i think a brand also shouldn't uh, back down and uh, you know in fear and that's that's the right example no i think the, the best the best point he made which is very interesting to if your dna is the platform that you are working on and you are not just doing something for a day for a moment for an occasion which has got nothing to do what you stand for Mm-hmm. the difficulty will be if something gets picked up and a discussion happens on it for example mm-hmm. i think it's easier to stand by something that this is what i've been doing for years what are you talking about i mean it's not the first time i came so if it's part of your dna as a platform it's far mm-hmm. easier and and these days as we all know everything is debatable everything is you know has a conversation on it topic on it everything is everything can be you know uh, talked about so while we enjoy the attention of success there are times when we also have to be ready to face the music if mm-hmm. something for whatever reason because we can't look at social media only one way we just can't look at you know sharing things and going you know wow 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 all the time sometimes people may react differently but if you if it's part of your dna then you have a conversation point you can stand by it and say i've been doing this for last 10 5 years you know 2 years running so then there is a conversation at least and that gives you what harshad said i i think very important that and you can stand by stand behind your work and stand for it rather than you know justify okay you know also we we, we touched upon this in the beginning of the conversation you know where we talked about how will we maybe to some people big clients it's still a big mainline agency a lot of work is happening on tv but has the profile of the person uh, watching tv changed and you know as creative people are you accordingly making uh, creating ideas to suit that you know a lot of my friends don't even have dth connections at home today they've all moved on to netflix is of the world so uh, does it automatically mean if i have to create an idea for the youth i'm going to digital and if i want uh, to create an idea for adults it's going to be on tv i mean how does it work for you first i want to sit down with these clients who think of, think about us like this i i think you should do a next session with them i think that's very important for them to meet us and you know have a conversation because i think that 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 perception is absolutely uh, <laughs> i don't know what to say because it's like you know it's incredible with the kind of body of work that we have uh, it's it's again it's ideas we have we stand behind ideas i i totally uh, i always admired I, i remember when i it's been a long journey for me here and i've always seen people and like star wars literally ahead of us do some extraordinary work and it's like oh my god how do they think of that and even today i hope the youngsters in a in a system believe that oh what how do they think of that i think that's what keeps it going and that's very very important to you know ensure so yeah the first thing is that how should you want to take the second question sorry what was the second part of the question uh, neeta the about that uh, the oh, changing patterns of you know younger people watching this and you know no so yeah while there is a lot of i mean i know uh, forget the younger people even people i would clearly call myself a happy middle aged person <laughs> but many of my contemporaries also have done away with the standard television channel bed ke bhi serial dekhenge uh, but having said that uh, sometimes you know the strategic team which includes the client it includes obviously our brand planning team and we have got some really wonderful minds at the ogilvy end who we completely i mean trust their judgment on and their analysis on and of course we have, we also come in early on so at times when we are given a clear picture the increasing number of briefs which are absolutely digital first and even within that uh, you know platform sharp like we have had briefs in the past 2 years more than uh, more than ever before which simply come and tell us that we want to make this content but we only are targeting instagram users or you know we want to make this content but it will never run on tv it will only run on xyz platform Right. that in a way is challenging but it also makes it crystal clear and then you step into the shoes of what this person he or she is consuming and then it becomes that much more daunting but that much more exciting too so that isn't happening with every you know that kind of uh, customization isn't happening with every strategic brief that comes to us but we are seeing an increasing number of those happening it makes our life easier otherwise i think none of us absolutely blindly go with an assumption that because Hey, you know, it's a youth music app, so we will only do this and not TV. I think that is also too premature in a country where TV holds such big sway to mm-hmm. for us to assume and then tailor it to that. And uh, so, usually, it has to be backed by a certain amount of uh, 
precise data to go about it and rather than assume because media anywhere is has a certain cost application yeah nita you know the with the most uh, digital first ideas that we have done even those have needed a video format story to explain to people what those ideas were so i think if you ask me uh, it's what anything at the end of the day has a output mm-hmm. and even the smartest of the smartest uh, you know the the grand prix contenders at can <coughs> digital first even they have a video to tell you what their idea is right so it's extremely important to just um, you know ensure that uh, nothing is a uh, it's all it's all there in the problem that's sitting in front of us and we have amazing partners like harsha said we trust uh, the judgment that comes from and then our job is to find the most exciting solution that mm-hmm. can solve a problem which is age defying whatever like you know i i, I mean, it's like you know i remember a time when suddenly everyone was doing raps i like why mm-hmm. are we making a rap it's just because you know if now that's that's something that we don't want to do we don't like to do uh, we want to we we want like i said we, we all all want to try to have something whether on whatever medium tv digital print radio that people talk about that's the first job like i remember someone told me nobody watches an ad right nobody watches an ad anywhere whether in digital craft wherever you are so please make something that people talk about and they stop to watch the stuff that we do so that's the most important thing we have to do so whatever is the medium i think the most important task at the hand to all of us would always be can i make people watch this and fall in love with it or you know experience it or you know enjoy it or spend time here and do something with it mm-hmm. but you know you, you spoke about rap so similarly you know you, we still have those formula ads you know women bewitching men with their beauty the useless uh, use of absolutely horrible use of celebrities so you know why are those still being made i thought they were they had run their course and we are at new age no we are so there will <laughs> there will always be a mix uh, we are actually in fact as uh, you know custodians of uh, the communication we often i mean luckily a lot of the clients that uh, sukesh kena zai and our teams work with we are and i'm saying this not because it's you know the right thing to say but because it shows in the work that we are blessed with some awesome client partners who have shaken off this mold you know what is the what we have seen on the inside when we get into these discussions the uh, the urge to follow a formula is actually uh, it's a self goal because it's it's self defeating for the purpose of creativity creativity by definition is going to mean that you know say the relevant thing but say it in the most surprising most uh, stand out way possible say it in the most uh, amazing way possible so that people remember you amidst the sea of eight other messages mm-hmm. but certain category connects what what some of our uh, uh, some of our uh, friends on the client side some of them don't realize is there are certain codes which have come into being because somebody decided to create those codes when there were none that's why they stood out that's why their business grew that's why the advertising became popular <laughs> but then it became a pattern of clones acha uska wo jewelry ad aise shorts ki wajah se aur aise formula ke wajah se chala uska okay. soft drink ad uh, it worked because of these things uh his car advertising that brand's car advertising worked because you know they show these kind of shots hey it worked for them now let us also do it it will work for us maybe it can even two three other brands for a certain stretch can possibly gain some noticeability and then what you're doing is you're shooting yourself in the foot because i mean why will you stand out if you keep going and uh, going into the comfort and the safety of said formulas that is what at least i mean we don't expect them because obviously i mean they are the ones who are shelling out the money so somewhere we अंडरस्टैंड वेदर कंफर्ट कम्स ऑन मेरी कैटेगरी में हर कोई ये कर रहा है तो मुझे भी ऐसा ही करना चाहिए एंड इट्स द इट्स द फियर ऑफ द अननोन ना आई मीन वी डू एडवर्टाइजिंग टुमारो आई एम टोल्ड दैट यू नो यू शुड एट लीस्ट टेक योर फर्स्ट स्टेप इन लर्निंग न्यूक्लियर समथिंग अबाउट न्यूक्लियर फिजिक्स आई बी स्केड सो इन अ वे एनीथिंग दैट्स अ चेंज इज गोइंग टू बी यू आर टेलिंग देम टू वर्क एन अनचार्टेड कोर्स द मोस्ट वी कैन डू एज एजेंसीज इज टू हैंड होल्ड एंड से दैट वी आर नॉट थ्रस्टिंग दैम अलोन ऑन दैट पाथ as an agency partner we have a conviction and we are working with you so let's try something which is different but yet on a relevant beef so yes you are right about the fact but it is equally true that things are changing we are trying our best to convert i, I would say the sense. the ratio of that is coming down and i and i am positive and i am very hopeful that everyone benefits from that and all agencies are not just for we i hope that we all do stuff which is you know we feel good about feel great about creating something like that So I, I think I, I at least in yes I totally agree 
they are still there mm-hmm. i see them and i i i see them and i acknowledge I don't see them <laughs> yeah i can only see them but i'm hoping that uh, people see it's all about it's at the end of the day it's all about courage and conviction i the more people have courage and conviction the fact that audiences are not sitting out there and saying ki show me this yaar at least you know and like i said the first thing for me ads are not not something there are people i know who are ad holics you know they love to watch ads great but they're not majority people don't want to so we have to surprise them we have to you know catch them and surprise them so i think i hope for the interest of everybody that also changes soon <laughs> but but tell me which are your favorite uh, i mean i know you do uh, you are fair as far as you know the output is concerned but there must be some favorite clients of yours some favorite brands in general like we have fernando <laughs> machado in the west uh are there any any fernando machados in india that you look up to and you want to work with on tv quite a, quite a few of them yeah i mean this is not to say i mean this is of course like we are saying that every brand and every client has a reality that we are also getting used to so and again not because it's some politically correct thing to say but everybody and because we are partners to them and we don't govern like an external you know just one external party for just some superficial amount we know the trouble that maybe their brands haven't uh, you know uh, had the spotlight on them yet but there are certain brands which might not have yet but there are certain realities there might be you know structural realities at their organizations there might be a legacy issue there might be a market issue for which that work has not shown so i wouldn't really uh, you know grade any of our clients uh, because i really know that the trouble is real for everybody mm-hmm. but in terms of uh, just talking about there are a host of uh, brands where uh, where things have worked and uh, which have resulted at least for i mean i'm i'm sure sukesh has those uh, those wonderful uh, experiences where the work can be pushed and some of the most i mean some of the most noticeable work that has happened with uh, many of our clients uh, on our side we can safely say some of our brookborn work some of our unilever work uh, unilever corporate or uh, itc what uh, the sablon team is uh, doing with us i mean the excitement of uh, waiting for a new idea i mean we often kind of you know have to tell us this is the same kind of excitement that is usually there in creative teams within the agency so mm-hmm. we have we have these equations going we are of course mondelez i mean sukesh can give his own stories of so many brands so we have a host of them so it will be i think yeah as we clear, a- as as uh, correct as it sounds it will be unfair to single out a few but uh, top of the mind these are some of the things which have translated into that kind of work yeah i think it took most of the names i'll add one more to the coca cola the recent uh, it's mm-hmm. insane yeah so again it's not i think uh, the answer to your question is what i find incredible ita is that there is a leader in all these companies who's obviously setting the you know uh, the what the what the path must be but what i find the depth of the work that is amazing across these the, the names that 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 harsh has shared and you know i just took a few of them is every single brand under that in that company is today wanting to happily do stuff which is magical so it's not just one brand yeah so every company is sitting with multiple brands and that is the magic that i am so happy to you know be part of and and my teams and you know all the people that we work with you know and it's it's the partnership that we are creating across you know so for example even the people let's say directors always were working with us right uh, so many of them good morning you know bob uh, varma prasoon so many you know vivek and so many rajiv rao new you know Uh, fantastic work on so there's so many the list is endless you know so i think the it's the team that that comes together because of that one leader mm-hmm. who has the vision to trust and the leaders are we are very fortunate to have many of them sitting and working with us in ogilvy so yeah we have a, a full team by the way i can count 11 of them by the way we can make a, a star team of clients yeah No, and it's a very. I also want to stress upon one thing within, like when I uh, broadly used an umbrella term like Unilever. Unilever is the equivalent of you know like literally some twenty, thirty odd brands under that umbrella. It's okay. great to see. I think the heart of the industry is in the right place. They might have their uh, you know whatever ground realities. Every brand will have its ground realities because of the kind of work that is coming out. But uh, we have seen that good work has to start a ripple effect. so within unilever also you know uh, brook bond ho dove ho comfort ho so many so many different categories that we work with like 
any brand that uh, you know notches like a score on good work it creates a ripple effect you get compliments from all the teams uh, and similarly not just that when much of the work on mondelez happened the most heartening thing i've seen is be it srk uh, not just a cadbury ad or be it good luck girls the mm-hmm. amount of other ogilvy clients who have called us to compliment i think that shows that this industry yeah. has its heart in the right place that's a great point huh that's a great mm. point i love the so one is the internal uh, i think what what we spoke about what we trying to tell you was that it's a team of multiple brand managers and marketing managers and working under the head of marketing whatever designation whichever company they have but mm. the love for good work the other good work you know calling each other respect of who's doing it calling each other in their you know in their own conferences that's amazing you know it's just so nice to see to be invited to you know and they know obviously because we 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 run the you know we we work on multiple 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 brands now so to get an invitation why don't you come with your partner to our marketing offsite and, and can you share uh, you know some of your and the willingness from this side also is saying yeah why not that's great i mean you know i know this person and they are also doing great work so that's <laughs> very very healthy to be appreciative to acknowledge so it feels good to be that you are working with such people who are forever uh, you know congratulating each other and supporting each other and not just sitting out there and saying you know that was not good this was not good because i think our business is so subjective uh, it is so like you know it, and like i said most of the time there's love but there's also hate sometimes which is also okay because part and parcel of the game you can't just look for love all the time mm-hmm. but uh, it's good to know that uh, we are working with people our partners who are appreciative of each other's work that's wonderful but, feeling to be that that's really nice but you know if i were to quote david ogilvy i think he said uh, we regard advertising as an art form and expect your clients to fund uh, your expressions of genius but right. you know they just pay us to sell their products nothing less right. nothing else is that right. true are there clients who still i mean who want to go beyond and create an no business see it's like i, I think the point is the point to remember that it's a business and we must do business to us to have the because without earning there will be none of this right without there be none of it which is happening so i think uh, all of them are obviously extremely good at in terms of understanding what the problem is and what will the solution be and innovative solution that they're looking for to help their business so i think that the, the difference here is they are not mm-hmm. just looking for a solution they're looking for the innovative solution and that's where the magic happens where mm-hmm. the transfer happens from just a ordinary you know something like before after if i could say mm-hmm. so to something and, and before after can be very magical also by the way so i take my word back but just as if the great idea there but i just feel that all of them know what is the problem and they mm-hmm. all are very clear that they want a very innovative solution to the problem and i think just because they are absolutely aware of the fact and they're very clear that we're looking for an innovative solution is why we are able to do the kind of work that we are creating harsha do you agree you want yeah to add- in fact no in fact i wanted to add to that that the question that you asked i think there is nothing wrong with the client thinking the way they do if they say that is say mera business stabilize hone wala hai ki nahi because i think we would be unaligned and mismatched if we ourselves didn't cater i mean we are absolute we consider ourselves and especially at ogilvy we consider ourselves you know almost like warriors for creativity because you know creativity reigns supreme and everything but that means the quality of the work because all of for gilvy beyond the creative department also uh, we have seen is geared towards that mm-hmm. but i'm seeing all of it comes from an understanding that it can't be creativity for its own sake and that is something we are ne- we have never been delusional about and while we love fine art and we love uh, you know we have our own favorites in every form of expression we are an applied art that is what we have been taught that is what we consider it as a challenge and that is what we consider it as a ultimate glory of our work only and only if everything that we do it mm-hmm. has to ultimately give our business the assurance that it is moving towards the targets that this work the client has invested x amount of money it should give them बीट शॉर्ट टर्म लॉन्ग टर्म आई एम नॉट सींग दैट एवरी एडवर्टाइजिंग हेज टू बी अरे एड देखा आज शाम को मैंने जाके दुकान से खरीद लिया बट आई एम सींग इवन क्रिएटिंग ब्रांड लव इफ इट्स हेल्पिंग एन लेटर कंसिडरेशन आई थिंक इट्स हैज अ डायरेक्ट इम्प्लीकेशन ऑन द यू नो ऑन द बिजनेस ऑफ द क्लाइंट एंड वी आर वेरी कॉग्नोसेंट ऑफ दैट एट टाइम्स अ क्लाइंट हेल्प सेट दो गोल्स एंड दिस से दैट यू नो आई एम नॉट एक्सपेक्टिंग सेल्स टू गो अप इमीजिएटली दिस क्वार्टर बट आई वॉन्ट माई ब्रांड टू स्टार्ट 
making a place in people's heart and be considered that by itself is a business goal so i'm saying we are we will be foolhardy and we'll be stupid if we decide that you know so and so client doesn't look at anything beyond business because like sukesh said until their business until their cash registers are ringing they are not going to be patrons of good work and in the process uh, the very fact that our work needs to be different uh, while being relevant allows us to do you know culture defining work i think they can't be mutually exclusive they are they are uh, joined together the business goals and the right creativity super man i think you guys are doing a remarkable job of that within the constraints and with uh, can coming up we're hoping to see you pick up much many more medals out there thank you so much thank you <laughs> there, there are no constraints there are no constraints that's that's the challenge that, that's a nice way of looking at it no that's i don't i don't i honestly don't think there are constraints by the way because it took me some time and i must share with you i used to go to push <clears> remember i used to say and i remember once he told me I was i was very young and he said the day you will build your house if the architect tells you don't make walls don't put windows leave open would you do it because it's all got practical stuff that has to be considered and then you will say okay and mm-hmm. it was something just as you know how you keep you know <laughs> example that you brought <laughs> but knowledge. yeah and, and i and obviously i was nowhere in my stage of life to build anything you know i was like i barely have enough you know <laughs> go and you know meet my friends but then i say but when the stage i i think you know it it you realize that you know it's true because there are constraints there are the real um things that we are solving and they have come to us just like anyone goes to a, a specialist to in that problem find me the solution and i think when we deliver that we see magic happen always i feel that every time i remember the you know the google brief was so clear it was like uh, i i still remember everyone knows me but no one sees anything for me can you put some soul into my super tech product i think that could have got a clearer brief i like wow i did i was sitting in the room i was like this is so amazing this is like wow and there was no tg there was no like you know oh you only young people you nothing you just and of course we wrote lots we wrote tons we wrote because it was so exciting to write that and then we chose one of it did we know it will become that big we had no idea we were just having so much fun you know we made it we went about it we executed it, and then the rest is history but we all want to do it was not a constraint it was a challenge to solve and we all had a great time solving the challenge and the output is like i said at the end of the day it's in the you know the court room of public love it mm-hmm. hate it it's up to them but we always want to have fun while we're doing that so no constraints never <laughs> so in that case let me rephrase it let me let me hope that i'm um, years hoping that you fly high and may sky be the limit i you hope so, so too thanks thank a lot so much for having thank us. you for thank having you. us bye bye take bye. care bye thank you so much